The Arizona State Sun Devils spring football game is kicking off tomorrow evening, and we're here to discuss three questions that we're hoping will be answered tomorrow night. This is the Locked on Sun Devils podcast. You are Locked on Sun Devils, your daily podcast on the Arizona State Sun Devils. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Locked on Sun Devils podcast. My name is Richie Bradshaw. I will be your guide for all things Arizona State Sun Devils related. Thank you so much for making us your first listen every day. Remember, this podcast is free and available on all platforms, including but not being limited to Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, the Odyssey app. We're also on YouTube. If you want to check us out on a visual platform as well, go ahead, like, subscribe, comment, share, five star, all that good stuff. If you're on the Bird app, go ahead and follow me while you're there as well. You can find me at RichieBrads36, just like the graphic right there shows you. Also, go ahead and follow the podcast while you're there as well at LO underscore Sun Devils. Look, I think I'm going to keep this Friday edition of the Lock on Sun Devils podcast short, sweet, simple, to the point. Don't want to continue to feed a fed horse right now. We have three things that we're going to be specifically looking at tomorrow night for the spring game. There are a lot of questions about the Sun Devils football team right now. There's a lot of things we don't know. I have found a way to narrow it down to just three questions. The first of which is very, very obvious. We'll just go ahead and get that out of the way. What is going on at the quarterback spot? We need some kind of clarity back there. Is it going to be Trenton Borgay? Is it going to be Paul Tyson? Is it going to be Glenn Thomas? Who's it going to be? Is it going to be someone else? Is it going to be another transfer? We don't really know. Right now, all we can hope and pray for is that the guy on the roster is the guy. Whether that's Borgay, whether that's Tyson or any of the other guys we currently have, you're really hoping that they are on the field tomorrow night. You're hoping that they are going to show out as well. We don't want them to just show up. We want them to have a good day. We're not saying you need to complete 100% of your passes for 500 yards and 10 touchdowns. No one should be expecting that, even against a ragtag secondary of a lot of just question marks. But neither here nor there. As far as the quarterback spot goes, I want to see – the the best out of these guys. I don't care who it is. I don't care if it's Borgay. I don't care if it's Tyson. I don't care if it's somebody else. But I want to see a quarterback have a really, really strong day out on the field. And I want this guy to rise above all of the all of the unknown that's going on with this offense right now. And that's asking a lot. And I understand that, but this is a year where Arizona state needs guys to step up. There is a lot of faces that are gone from the program, whether they graduated, they declared for the draft or they transferred. There are a lot, a lot, a lot of holes on this roster. We are devoid of a lot of what we had last year. We need guys to step up and take on leadership roles and prove to be greater than the circumstances. To me, that starts at quarterback. I need to see who's going to be leading my team. Who's going to be literally quarterbacking the offense. Who's going to be the guy that helps, helps get everything going. I need that guy desperately. And I'm truly hoping that he's on this roster. I'm hoping it's one of Borgay or Tyson. And I'm totally fine if it's not one of them, if it's someone else on the roster. But I would prefer to keep in-house because if Saturday comes and goes and all these guys look really, really bad, I am not feeling confident at all. I would be very, very worried moving forward about – whether or not we're going to have to continue to look outside of 
the realm that we have right now. Are we going to have to look at more transfers? I know we've talked before about how enticing JT Daniels is to bring in, but let's be real. It's April. We have kickoff at the end of August. That is less than five months away. Getting a transfer in now, especially with spring practice nearly being done, that is far from ideal. We need the guy right now on this roster. We need him now. That's the situation we're in, unfortunately. So what I want to see is I want to see a confident quarterback. I want to see a competent quarterback. I want to see someone who goes out there on the field and feels like he can make all the throws, feels like he knows the offense and can run the offense like a four-year pro. I don't want to be looking out there and just feeling completely scared about what I'm seeing. I want to see a guy come out and be confident. Again, this isn't me saying like you need to have like some 10,000 point passer rating, which I'm sure you could get in college football. What I want to see is a guy who is sure of himself. I think that's the best way to put it. And I want to see a guy who at the end of the day, I would feel confident in rolling into the season. You're not going to be Jaden Daniels. That's okay. You don't need to be Jaden Daniels. You don't need to be Manny Wilkins. You don't need to be Mike Bercovici. We just need you to be a guy that I can look at and go, we can win with him. Okay. I, I think it's asking a lot to say we will win because of this guy. We'll get there. There's time. Okay. Like you've got another year in 2023 for the vast majority of these guys. If they take that next step, then that's awesome. But right now, I just want to be able to look out there with some kind of confidence, not only for myself, but from the guy who's under center, taking the snaps and just calling the plays. I want to see someone who knows who they are in this offense. And that's also going to be very, very telling because of everything that's going on with the program in terms of new faces, all that good stuff. With that being said, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up that first segment right then and there. And I think I'm going to sneeze. Maybe not. When we get back from the first break, we're going to go ahead and hop into the second question that I have here. This, of course, is the Locked on Sun Devils podcast. Guys, I know it. It's that time of year. We're ready to give up on our New Year's resolutions. I don't blame you guys, but I got good news for you. I am not giving up on my New Year's resolutions this year. And it's thanks to our friends over at Built Bar. If you guys haven't had their Puffs by now, you're absolutely missing out on one of Built Bar's best tasting bars. Puffs are the first ever protein infused marshmallow. They're fluffy, they're marshmallowy. They're not just a protein bar, they're a treat. And just like all Built Bars, they're covered in 100% real chocolate. Puffs are a fan favorite with incredible flavors like yummy cinnamon churro, coconut marshmallow, banana cream pie. All so good, they're going to be your favorite. And yes, they are covered in 100% real chocolate. If you go to built.com, scroll down to the macro chart, you'll be blown away with what you see. All these bars are high in protein, low in calorie, high in fiber, low in carbs. And compared to a candy bar, which is typically around 240 calories, 30 grams of sugar, and dozens of net carbs. With tons of flavors like mint brownie, coconut, coconut almond, and new for this month, white chocolate cookies and cream. They have so many delicious flavors with new flavors coming out all the time. If they think a flavor might be good, they'll make it, and it'll be delicious and good for you. At Built Bar, they're all about the taste. They make it delicious first, then figure out how to make it healthy. And I don't know how, but they pull it off every single time. So go to Built.com right now and use the promo code LOCK15 to get 15% off your order. That's promo code LOCK15 for 15% off at Built.com. And again, thank you guys so much for making the Locked on Sun Devils podcast your first listen every day. Remember, we are free and available on all platforms. We're going to go ahead, hop right back into the conversation here. Talking about the quarterbacks in the first segment. Second segment. And this is going to be a lot broader. I am not focusing specifically on one group. I'm not focusing on one side of the ball. My question, my number two question now, who are the playmakers? I'm not talking about the receivers. I'm not talking about the running backs. 
I'm not just talking about the quarterbacks. What about defense? Who's making the plays in the secondary? What about the front? Who's getting sacks? Who's generating pressure? Who's getting turnovers? What about special teams? Do I have a guy I can I can trust to house sit whenever he gets the opportunity? Do I have a good enough kicker? Do I have a punter that can down it inside the five-yard line? I need playmakers. And again, playing off of what we just talked about in the in the in the first segment there, this roster is missing a lot of what it had last year. And there were playmakers last year. You had Rashad White, you had Chip Trainum, you had Curtis Hodges, Jaden Daniels, you had Tyler Johnson, Darian Butler, Jack Jones, Chase Lucas. You had so many guys that you could look at and be like, he can make a play happen. Like any second he can do something and we're going to, we're just going to be like, okay, that's the dude. Something's going to happen whenever they're around the football. All of those guys are gone. Every single one of them I just named is gone. What do we do now? Well, first of all, it starts with getting the quarterback situation figured out. You got to figure out what's going on there from after that. I want to see the guys who are going to step up around these quarterbacks whoever it might be. I'm going to start by looking at the running backs. I'm going to look at Xavier and Valade. I'm going to look at Daniel Nagata particularly. Those are the two guys that I'm going to ask the most out of. I want them to become the focal parts of the offense. I want to be able to literally run the offense through them. I need them to be all that and a bag of peanuts. Caps the ball, run hard, big plays, score touchdowns, effective. I know it's asking a lot. I know it's asking a lot for a guy like Nagata, who has been the third running back for pretty much the entirety of his career with Arizona State so far. I know it's asking a lot of Zazavian Valade to come to a Power 5 team after playing at Wyoming for each of his first three years. I understand that's a that's a high high task for these guys. But unfortunately the circumstances demand it. And it's not fair, but it is the it is the situation and the 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 spot that we find ourselves in right now with the program is we truly don't have a choice but to look at these guys and say step up. It's your turn. Look at the receivers. Ricky Pearsall needs to be that guy. I'm ready for him to take that next step. And I think he's capable. And he's a very smart receiver. I think he is a crafty route runner and a dude who is deceptively explosive when the ball is in his hands. I think he's a lot faster than people realize. And I think he can he can make something happen just about every time he touches the football. I want to see the other receivers too. Andre Johnson. The potential was there. But after the Wazoo blowout game, he disappeared. Literally disappeared. We need him back in the folds. We need him to be consistent. We need the receivers in general to step up. But I'm looking particularly at Ricky Pearsall. Tight end, I'm not going to pin it on, on Messiah Swenson. I am excited for him. Apparently, he's been blown up in camp. But I, I'm definitely not going to look at Swenson and be like, yeah, you've got to be that guy. No, that's not fair. Go to the defensive side of the ball. Jermaine Lole, you are front and center here. You need to be a playmaker. More than capable. Lole is an absolute monster. That dude was legitimately getting top 50 buzz for this year's draft class before he went down with his injury. He's coming back. That's huge for Arizona State. So the potential that they have there, outstanding. If he gets back to what he was, that that's what a playmaker looks like. That's the kind of confidence that I want to have in this defense. I want to be able to look at Jermaine Lola and go, yeah, there you go. You know what? I feel confident in this defense because we have a guy like Lola who can anchor. That's what I want to be able to say. I want to see some of the other D linemen step up. I would love to see BJ Green and Omar Norman Lott take that next step. That's ideal. Merlin Robertson, you need to be a playmaker too, more than capable. Robertson has been 
one of the most consistent and reliable defenders of the last 10 years for Arizona State. Coming back for his fifth year now, I have all the faith in the world that he can continue on the pace that he's been on to be just just a rock-solid, reliable player for Arizona State. All the faith in the world. But I need you to do it. It starts by proving to me that you're ready. You're ready to be the guy. Because after Jermaine Lole, you are the next best player on defense. Robertson has always been a very talented guy. He's had lots of help around him. And he's flourished with that help. He's done great with Darian Butler next to him. Jermaine Lole in front of him. Chase Lucas and Jack Jones behind him. But now it's him. And not only that, he's going to be the guy of the linebacking core. He's the leader. He's the veteran. He's he's going to be the, the quarterback of the defense. We're looking at you, Merlin. I'm also going to look at Eric Gentry here. I want to see you take that next step. We saw how special you looked as a freshman. Now show me how special you can be in a whole other year of being stashed, developed, and looking at that athletic upside. The dude's an absolute marvel of a man. I want to see you take that next step. Back end, I'll continue to hammer this home, but Corey Bethley, I want to see you take that step as well. I think that if anybody in the secondary should be relied on to be a playmaker, it's Corey Bethley to me. Bethley may not have a lot of power five experience, but he has a lot of secondary experience all over the place. Playmaker too. Bunch of interceptions, a couple sacks here and there, tackling machine. That's what I want to see. I'm not saying you need five picks to have a successful year. You could have one pick. You could have zero picks. But if you're flying around the ball and proving to me that you're capable of doing everything we ask, then I'm happy. But those are the guys I need to be playmakers. Special teams, I'm just expect to be disappointed. You'll never be disappointed. As long as DJ Taylor is returning kicks, I'm just going to almost tune out. No offense, DJ. I'm sure you're a great guy. You're not a great kick returner is what it is. I still love Eddie Zablicki. I feel like he's one of the best punters, if not the best punter in the Pac-12. Kicking, who knows? Give me the bare minimum out of special teams. But those are the guys I'm going to be looking at to be my playmakers. It starts Saturday night showing me how everybody responds to their new roles. Because the guys I named are either coming back from injury or are stepping into a new starting role or transfers. So that's where I'm going to be looking. I want to see how everything gets settled in. That's going to leave me to our final break and our final segment coming up here with my third and final question. This is the Locked on Sun Devils podcast. BetOnline is still your number one source for all your betting needs and sports info. Find the latest sports developments, including this week's Masters Championship odds, podcasts, and reviews for all the different leagues this season. BetOnline is your continued source for all your sports wagering information, including live betting, esports, and scores. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action. BetOnline, where the game starts. All right, guys, let's not waste any more time. Let's go ahead, hop into our final segment now. We got to talk about the entirety of the team this time. How much confidence are we going to have? That's my final question. How much confidence are we going to have by the end of tomorrow night's game? Are we going to leave there and think, mm, yeah, this is this is a good team. They'll rebound. This is another eight-win team. Or are we going to leave there and be like, man, we'll be lucky to win four games? I I think that's the biggest question that I have right now is when I when I leave Tempe tomorrow night, am I going to be happy with what I saw? Am I going to be disappointed? How confident am I going to be? 
on a scale of one to ten. One being not, not confident at all. Ten being we're going to win the Pac-12 South. Where where am I going to be sitting here with it? That's what I want to know. That's what I need answered tomorrow night. And it's going to be based around the two previous questions. Who are my playmakers, offensively and defensively? How's the quarterback situation look? I got to ask more questions. How many different offensive line shufflings are we going to see? Is the tight end going to be a factor this year? How do the young linebackers look? Are the young defensive linemen ready to step up? What does a new look secondary appear to be? What's the special teams going to be like? What about the coaching? How's everything going to mesh? Are things going to work out this year? Is this a lost year? These are all questions that not only I have, but all of Sunday, Sun Devils faithful have. I'm sure the players and the coaches are wondering the same thing. Right now, nobody knows what to expect. We can sit here with our rose-colored glasses and pretend that everything is fine and pretend that we're still going to be an eight-win team. I've said this before on the Locked On Pac-12 podcast. If you guys aren't checking that out, please make sure you go over. Cindy Robinson does an amazing job over there. But I'm firmly at, I think this is a 6-6 six and six team. I think this is a bowl eligible team. I think this is a confident enough team. But I just don't see much better than that. And the Pac-12 South is going to be a very fierce division to play in. UCLA is still a very good team. USC just got Lincoln Riley. Utah is still a great team. We're behind all three of them. We got to figure out what to do with U of A who is probably going to rebound. And when I say rebound, I mean better than one win. They're not competing for the South. But we got to figure out what to do with them. Colorado seems like the bottom dwellers. I still don't feel like we we can absolutely devastate them. Mm -mm, Definitely not. What about the rest of Pac-12? We don't got to play Oregon, but we still got to play. We got to play Oregon State. Thankfully, they come to Tempe. We got to play both the Washington teams. We got to play Stanford. This isn't going to be an easy stretch of games. We got to go to Stillwater for Oklahoma State. That feels like a guaranteed loss, like a 50 point loss, honestly. This is going to be a very trying season. Before we even get there, though, I need to know how confident should I be in this team? Should I should I set my expectations so low? That no matter what happens, I'm happy? Or should I go into this with the mindset of, you know what? We're gonna shock some people. We're we're gonna we're gonna change some minds. We're gonna we're gonna make people feel silly for doubting us. Which one of them is it gonna be? Is it gonna be somewhere in the middle? Is this a six and six team, like I'm saying? Is this an eight-win team? Is this a two-win team? We're not gonna know. Not until it happens. But Saturday night is going to be a great indicator. This is where I'll be able to sit down, watch the team, and figure out how I feel. This is an opportunity for me to begin grasping my initial thoughts on the team. And that's where I'm going to leave it. We'll go ahead and stop there on a Friday edition of the Locked on Sun Devils podcast. Thank you guys so much for tuning in every single day. Remember, this podcast is free and available on all platforms, including but not being limited to Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, the Odyssey app. We're also on YouTube if you want to see us in a visual format. Go ahead, like, subscribe, comment, share, five-star, rate, all that good stuff. Follow me on Twitter, the Bird app, at RichieBrad36. Follow the podcast while you're there as well, at LO underscore Sun Devils. Thank you guys so much for making us your first listen every day. Go ahead and make your second listen locked on NFL Draft with Ryan Tracy and former NFL cornerback Eric Crocker, as the two of them bring the NFL draft to life every day with insight and analysis on college football prospects and NFL front offices. Just like the Locked on Sun Devils podcast, it's free and available on all platforms. And until next time, guys, you keep it locked right here on Locked on Sun Devils.